Frank, I tell you, not only do they save your life putting out fires, but these firefighters are able to uh, do rescues. And we've seen the overwater rescue operations numerous times, especially with the LA River uh, rising up in uh, altitude, as you've seen, or deeper water. This person was caught, somehow got into the, into the riverbed uh, and is uh, basically hanging on for his life. There's a little bit of a uh, current running south, and one of the rescue helicopters, LA City Fire 5 or 6, I believe it is, is going to hoist this person out. He's moving in between the power lines here. A pretty technical uh, job here for these pilots. He's going to lower this hoist and get the guy back up into safety. Now, the 6th Street Bridge, the 7th Street Bridge, and one south of the 10 Freeway are all manned with L.A. City firefighters that are uh, there just in case this person should fall off. But right now, rescue under in place here. A hoist rescue is what they call it, just north of the 10 Freeway. We're going to watch to see this. It's pretty pinpoint accuracy. These pilots are really good. They hold that rock solid hover. They're putting a fire a paramedic or a fire tack on that uh, on that device, and they will move him closer and closer, and then be able to lift him up here very shortly. Yeah. It, no, it's incredible to watch what they're able to do with this aircraft, where they just hover right above where this uh, this person is in a really precarious spot there. And it's interesting because we were hearing the water isn't that deep, but when it's moving at that pace in, in that particular spot where this, this man is stuck, not easy to get out of that situation without help. Well, and you can see that, that it's, it, it, was, it was described as a foot deep and, yeah. and moving at about five miles per hour in terms of water speed. You can see the firefighter, the rescuer, able to walk to this person. Um, this is a, a potentially dangerous moment for any rescuer. You don't know the, the mental state right. or gotcha the physical therefore. state of this person who may resist you. You may be trying to save the person, and, uh, and the person may resist. Um, and, and so you have to be very careful oh. for your own safety. But you can see that that person has been, uh, uh, the hoisting has begun. Mike, uh, th we can see the power lines there, and what a... Mm. What a tough situation for, for that crew. Jess, uh, Frank, you know, you've brought up some really great points. Now, the power lines run perpendicular or actually parallel to both sides of the river at this one point. But, you know, uh, not only are we talking about, Jess, you're mentioning the, uh, the, the, the current, which is fairly uh, light, but how about the downwash from that rotor blade? That's about mm. 100 miles an hour downwash so not only are they fighting a little bit of a current mm. but also the downwash yeah. and uh, of course they practice this all the time but uh, wow aren't we glad to have these guys here absolutely incredible and that you know took a couple of minutes and I would imagine hoisting that man up that's not easy that, that was a yeah. big guy there that he was holding on to and to Mike's point when you've got the the rotor blades whipping around there uh, but they were able to do it and look at the cars just kind of driving by going what is going on here but impressive work well I, I just want to see because it, it's not over because you see that the power lines right in front yes. of that helicopter and about 50 yards back uh, another set of power lines that is a uh, and Mike can knows this better than anyone uh, th those power lines can be deadly to to a helicopter and you have to be incredibly skilled to do what this this crew is doing right now you know, Frank, they've got, he's got a couple of extra set of eyes on board, and they are talking to him all the time. They are talking him into the landing zone, which would be uh, considered a confined area, mm. and they're going to talk him out of the landing zone. So he's got eyes in the back and on the side, and they're watching him two foot forward, a foot back, whatever. He's getting constant input from that observer, firefighter, co-pilot, and now it looks like he's clear of the lines. He'll go straight up straight up until he's clear of the power lines and then they'll pick a landing zone to uh, uh, get this guy some medical treatment if in fact he needs some. Oh my goodness. I mean the way watching that pilot it was almost like someone in their car trying to get out of a parallel parking spot. Yeah. I mean that was incredibly impressive to watch in real time. It 